Hello everyone. I'm Fumihiko Kimura, the director of Team and Perio. In the daily practice, we meet the teeth, wondering if we should preserve it or not. Endoperio disease means a huge region around the apex is connected through the deep periodontal pocket. This time, I would like to present to you how to treat the endoperio region. In Japan, there are some mysterious stacked stones. In their shrines, located in the places like Kyoto. Similar to these stacked stones, we can meet these kind of the teeth where we cannot tell the exact cause of these big lesions. What is endoperio? Endoperial regions are defined as endo and the peri regions are spreading across both areas. The disorder of the periodontium may be having an effect through the lateral canal and apex. The disorder of the pulp may be having an effect through the lateral canal, foramen and apex. There is one famous endoperial classification. This is Simon's classification. Simon divided endoperial regions into three groups. The first one is the primary endodontic region. The second one is primary periodontal region. The third one is the true combined region. So let's go down to the case. My case is involving 41 years old male patient and his chief complaint was a pain and the swearings on the lower, lower right area. And regarding the medical history, past disease and the current disease was nothing related and he was also a non-smoker. And as for the dental history, he had a periodontal treatment until till two years ago at another dental office. This is the intraoral exam photos. And uh, you will notice that on the upper jaw, he's having a temporary bridge and uh, and lower jaw, he was uh, he had a uh, temporary fix by a composite. This is a panoramic X-ray. So today uh, we focus on these three teeth. You notice the very big region around the apex and it is connecting the deep periodontal pocket. This is closest view. This is uh, upper left canine and the lower left canine. And the lower right for smallers. There used to be a, a sprinting by a composite but now it was broken. And this is number 23. There was a deep periodontal pocket around eight to 10 millimeter at the distal. And the number 46, there was a deep periodontal pocket around nine to 11 meter at the distal side. And number 33, there was a very, deep periodontal pocket at the distal area as well. So I would like to you think that one question, this condition 
is caused by a one primary endo or two primary perio, three true combined, and four the other. The other is uh, like a root fracture or something. So we always do the pulp vitality test first, and we conduct uh, some mixed tests, like a thermal test and the electro test and the interview as well. And regarding the number 23, vitality was minus. So we diagnosed pulp necrosis and asymptomatic periodontal, apical periodontitis. So we did the root canal treatment first. And uh, this is the uh, X-ray at the root canal filling. And the number 33, these, these, these two was uh, vitality was plus. So we diagnose chronic periodontitis. After the periodontal initial treatment, I did a periodontal regenerative surgery. And when I opened, opened up the flap, you notice that uh, granulation tissue in the bone defect. And after removing the, all the granulation tissue, you can see that uh, this bone defect was three, three volt bone defect. So at that time, I used uh, uh, bovine bone mineral and the membrane as well, and uh, sutured like this. And regarding the number 46, vitality was uncertain. Uncertain means uh, very weak compared with the adjacent or uh, opposite side tooth. So we diagnosed uh, partially necrosis and a symptomatic apical periodontitis because uh, this is a much looted tooth. So we did a root canal treatment and the root canal filling. And we waited for six months. But uh, there was a very deep periodontal pocket still. So we did a regenerative surgery as well. OK, so let's see what's, what's going on of these theses. This is a uh, upper left K9. This was baseline. And uh, one year later, and five years later, pocket was fully recovered. So this was a uh, primary endo. And this is lower, lower right, lower left K9. This was baseline. And then three months later, and five years later. So this tooth was a primary perio. In the lower right, far smaller, this was baseline, and then six months after endo. Then uh, five years after periodontal surgery. and uh, periodontal pocket was fully really covered. So this tooth was true combined, means the tooth has a uh, endo regions and a periodontal lesion as well. Okay. And then now this is a photo of five years later. So I know, uh, so this patient may not have a so-called uh, Hollywood smile, but uh, now he's very happy because uh, we saved the, these teeth. So I'm gonna uh, share our strategy. So if you meet in the region, 
if the existing the cause of pulpitis like a uh, cavity or um, old uh, feeling so you may uh, suspicious about the uh, primary endodontic and the first please do the uh, vitality test and if it is it is minus please go to the endodontic treatment first and if the cause of the pulpitis will be not found and the other teeth suffering from perio you may suspicious about the primary periodontal lesion and please do the vitality test and if the vitality test was minus go to the endodontic treatment and after the endodontic treatment revariation after three to six months and check the periodont period oriented pocket remaining or not if the probing depth is less than four millimeter we do the non-surgical uh, periodontal treatment and if the probing depth is more than five millimeter we do a surgical periodontal treatment okay at last i'm going to introduce you our website endoperio team endoperio and at the, at the same time we operating the uh, team endoperio facebook page and uh, giving the some information of endoperio so please join us thanks for your kind attention bye bye